Well, hello there, friends. I tell you one thing, Ikea's got nothing on my meatballs. I made the perfect Swedish meatball for you with a perfect blend of meat, served with a creamy, buttery mashed potatoes and an amazing gravy that you could rub all over your body. <laughs> I tell you, you're gonna love it, I promise you. Stay tuned for it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the bell. Here we go, Swedish meatballs. Okay, friends, well, <laughs> I got the gloves on. We're making meatballs today. <laughs> and uh, we're making a Swedish meatball. Oh, no, 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 they're not Swedish. So, my research department <laughs> said they are actually Turkish. The Turk actually invented, and King Charles, King Charles from Sweden brought them to Sweden, and Akia stole them. <laughs> so... <laughs> As you know now, we got Swedish meatballs. What's the big deal with Swedish meatballs? Well, they're very good, and people are asking for me to make them. So here we go. French chef and Italian uh, making um, Turkish slash Swedish meatball. We're gonna have fun. Let's not worry too much about where they come from. I got pork, and I got uh, 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 beef, 80-20 uh, beef. And, uh, and pork, we add a little bit of bacon because we like it, but you don't have to do that. Just ground pork would be fine. One and a half, no, no, one and a quarter pound, one and a quarter pound. All right? I already sauteed some, uh, some onion. I got a huge onion that I cut and I already sauteed because I don't want to put raw onion in, a, in it, okay? And by the way, I don't really know if there's a traditional recipe in here. Uh, but it doesn't matter. We're going to make them nice. We're going to make a nice gravy and we're going to serve it with mashed potatoes and, um, and, uh, and then we're going to make a, um, uh, a cranberry jelly because it's supposed to be with uh, uh, lingerberry sauce and try to find that in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> so we made them with cranberry. And, um, and anyway, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, friends. So we got this big onion. You can see that's a big one, right? But you know I cook with big onion. <laughs> uh, if you don't have big ones, you know, like this I'm talking about, right? If you don't have a big one like this, then do it, put two of them in there, right? Not going to be, nobody's going to complain, oh, there's too many onion in your meatballs. If they do, you send them out. So a little bit of salt. Uh, uh, with salt, you're going to have to guys, figure that out what it is you like. A little bit of fresh black pepper in here. We're going to put a lot of that. And we can certainly adjust, but I don't put too much because I'm going to put a little cayenne in there for a little heat. And then I'm going to put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, okay? Just, uh, I don't know, what would you say? A good tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And then we're going to put some, uh, some breadcrumb. This is a, let me get the measuring cup because, you know, sometimes I, I, I do things. Look at it, I got measuring cups. I... <laughs> I know I don't use them too often, but I got them. And I just want to make sure we get everybody a, a, this is a cup. No, it's a cup. A cup of fresh breadcrumb. We make the fresh breadcrumb. You can use a panko in there. They probably use panko. I think panko is no flavor at all. It's dull. So what I do is I make fresh breadcrumb. Jack is going to give you a recipe for it. It's fantastic. It's really easy. I make enough of it. I make a lot of them. And then I keep it in a little container in my freezer. Whenever I need it, boom, here it is. All right? So we're going to put a little bit of garlic. I got about uh, uh, two tablespoons of garlic, chopped garlic. You can put less. You can put more. It's really up to you. Some people may not put as much. Remember, it's cooking. Eh? No, no rocket science around here. We take things not to say. I have a half of a teaspoon of cayenne, cayenne pepper. Come on, it's very spicy. We have a half of a teaspoon of allspice, and we're going to put some nutmeg. Now, if you don't have a nutmeg grinder like that, then put regular ground nutmeg. Not much of it is coming out, because there's a nut in there, you see? There's a nut. My nut is probably <laughs> not working too good. Hold on. You're supposed to put a... Uh, you watch, I'm going to have technical problem. No, it ain't coming out. It's not coming out. So you know what? I need to replace my nuts. Hold on. I'll be right there. <laughs> I got everything. Uh, you know, here you go. You put a big nut in there. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, in the middle of it, I got to replace my nuts. <laughs> God bless me. There you go, friends. Look, you take a nut right there, you put it on top of this, and you go like this. And it's suitable. And now, and now it's coming out. See? It's coming out right there. You can see it. You can see it. Right, don't put too much, now. Not Maggie. Old Spice, all those are good in the background, not in the foreground. Oh, where did I put this back in there for? I don't need it. So, <laughs> all right, and, and now we got two eggs, okay? Did I put enough salt in there? There you go, just in case. Now, I got a, a half a cup of, um, I'm going to put a little parsley in there. I don't think a lot of people put parsley in there, but I love it. I love parsley anyway. So, um, I am going to, um, wait, let me put all this up. Out of the way, friends. I have a half a cup of buttermilk. And uh, we're going to see if we need it, okay? We're not going to put it in quite yet. We're going to see if we need it. It's there. And we're going to mix this. And, uh, and now, remember, the onion got to be sauteed, okay? Don't want to be putting no raw onion on there, you know? And we're going to mix this really, really good. And, and, uh, and don't be afraid to overmix. I see people, oh, don't overmix it. It'll make your bean bowl tough. I don't know where they got that idea from, okay? It'll make them tough, all right? Now, uh, and, and the gloves makes it easier, otherwise, you know, the stuff goes into your fingernails and it's difficult to clean. It just makes it easy, that's all. And uh, you see, very simple. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna make some bowls and um, gotta make sure they're really, really, the mix is well done. We're gonna make some bowls and we're gonna let them refrigerate it before we saute them and then we're going to finish cooking them in the oven and then we're going to make this beautiful gravy very simple very simple everything is simple this is not complicated eh? and and you can all do this but you know you can all do everything i do i i do not do anything complicated the purpose of this channel is to do things then you guys can say hey i can do this it's not that big of a deal right. it's gonna be delicious all right look it looks good all right so, let me just be happy with this. And, uh, you know, I'm still going to put a little bit of, uh, I'm going to put half of this uh, uh, buttermilk, friends. Okay, I got a half a cup. I'm going to put about a quarter cup. Because I like the flavor of it. Just like, you notice I measured everything today, friends. I measured everything. So you can't say I didn't measure. <laughs> Normally, I don't like to measure too much. Because cooking, like to make a gravy, to make a sauce, to make a soup, you don't measure. But to make something like that, to give a good idea for everybody that likes to follow a recipe, you know, and there's a lot of you out there that I knew in the kitchen. So you don't really know. I got to give you some ideas, you know. So, friends, I think that's it. All right? We're not going to mix it any more than this. I am going to make, I want to show you. I have an ice cream scoop. Now, if you don't have an ice cream scoop, I highly recommend you get them. You know, they're not that expensive, and you can do so many cool things with an ice cream scoop. So, all right, I'm good. So now you see, all I gotta do is just take my, uh, my gloves off, put them right there, all right, and I'm good. My hands are clean, I don't have to worry. Very cool, there you go. All right, so now, Swedish meatballs or Akia meatball, I can't believe I'm doing a recipe after a, a furniture store. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, uh, well, you know, uh, uh, Jack just started a very good point today. I says, I can't believe I'm making a recipe for my furniture store. I said, well, you think about Maytag blue cheese. <laughs> they were in the appliances business and they made one of the best blue cheese there is. So look, this is my ice cream scoop. It's small. I take them and I roll them. I roll them, see they're smaller, and I put them on a, um, on a, on a seal pad. You may want to keep your hands a little wet when you do that, just a little bit of wet, like moist towel, and it won't stick as much to your hand, it'll be easier to roll them. And then when they are, we're gonna put them in the fridge for at least 45 minutes. So they're nice and cold, or you could, have put, them in, you could put them in a freezer 15, 20 minutes, but not so good, because they're gonna stick in the bottom of it, they're gonna have a flat thing, a flat thing. So in a fridge for 45 minutes to an hour, if you have the time. All right, friends, I'm going to do all this. We're going to find out how many we got out of it. And uh, I'll be back when we come back. We'll continue the recipe. See you in a few minutes.
Okay, friends. Well, we ended up with 43 of them, our size. And, uh, you know, I don't know the exact size of it, but you know what? I have a tape measure. <laughs> to give you an idea, friends, the, uh, the diameter of it is about uh, almost two inches. One and three quarter, two inches. Jack will give you the centimeter, <laughs> the metric measurement underneath there somewhere. So, uh, you can put them in a freezer, but be careful if you put them in a freezer because they'll get a flat side on a freezer. You see, look, look, I put those in the freezer for 10 minutes and they got a flat side. You see? Nice and round and over there a flat side. So be careful. If you put them in a freezer, then after 10 minutes, you roll them again. You roll them again. You want to make it roll them. I mean, some people don't mind, you know. I'm a little anal about those kind of things, you know. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to saute them really quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a dozen of them, just pop them in the oven. I took a thermometer out so to remind all of you friends out there, then use a thermometer. You need to cook them at about um, 150 degrees. 145, 155. Well, any, anywhere in there would be fine. You don't need to cook them more than that. 150 would be perfectly fine. We're going to make a little gravy, very simple gravy. I'm going to wait for this to be hot. I'm looking for about 365. The gravy is very simple. Is uh, is a little butter in there? I got a, a an ounce and a half, two ounces of butter with a quarter um, cup of flour, and I'm making a little roux. I mean, a child could do this. This is so simple, friend. Nothing to it, nothing to it at all. And then we're gonna put a little bit of stock, and then we're gonna flavor this. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Really, really, really nothing. Now my stock happens to be a beautiful stock. This is our homemade stock. It's gorgeous. And if you don't have a homemade stock, um, then you obviously you use a store-bought stock, but try to make sure it's a good one because it makes a whole world of difference for that sauce, friends. Okay, so we're going to keep cooking it for a while. Okay, very simple so far. And I'm going to flavor it with a, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, a little bit of soy sauce, salt and pepper. I'm going to flavor it. Then we're going to get it to the white texture and we're going to put a touch of cream. All right. In the meantime, let's get those uh, bowls. Uh, you know what? The heat was not hot enough. So let me stay with my sauce. I'm also going to serve it because um, Ikea, I <laughs> can't believe I'm still doing it with people at Ikea. But anyway, they serve it with some kind of green vegetables. Some Ikea give you broccoli. Some give you frozen peas and mashed potatoes. I got my butter mashed potatoes and I did broccoli. And in the broccoli, friends, Make sure, let me, let me get it. Can you see it, Jack? You got it? And the broccoli, make sure you get beautiful florette, okay? And, uh, and, and, and Jack is going to give you a little example. I'll show you exactly how to cut them perfectly. Don't go out there and cut your broccoli for, from, from you got to cut it from underneath. And, uh, and Jack will show you how to do it correctly. All right, friends? We're going to bring this to boil. And then um, let's see if our oil is hot. I'm looking for 365. I don't have it yet, but I'm close to it, so it's going to be okay. And like I said, I'm just going to do a dozen of them, okay? That's all I'm going to do. All right? A dozen of them, and then we're good to go. We'll, um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to give him a beautiful Maya reaction. I got uh, my garlic olive oil that I'm sauteing them in. You can do it in, uh, in any olive oil you like. Or you can do a good uh, frying oil, you know, whatever cooking oil you have, okay? Just a dozen for now. We're going to leave them alone. They season perfectly, so we don't need to do very much to it. You see, it's a little too thick right here, so that's why we got more stock. All right. And we're going to continue cooking it. And at the end, we're going to put a little bit of cream, a little bit of soy sauce. We're going to flavor it. This is so simple, eh? This is really, really simple. We're going to make it a gravy. And uh, see, it's looking beautiful already. And the flour needs to cook, so we're going to continue cooking it. Now, the, the fact that we're using this beautiful stock, uh, it's already delicious right there. Ooh, we don't want it to cook them too much. We just want to get a beautiful golden brown color. And you know, when I put them in a pan, oh, mamma mia, this one is getting too brown. I don't like it when that happens. Reduce the heat, jump here. Reduce the heat. There you go. Like it again. You know what? Pen needs to be more in the middle. Let's take with this one over there and this one over there. Then <laughs> I get them beautiful golden brown. You gotta do this, friends. You gotta, you gotta get them. You gotta get that Maya reaction, okay? You just count. Just put them in the oven like this. Any? 
Now you could deep fry them if you wanted to also, and, and that'll go a lot faster if you deep fry them, but I don't really like deep frying those. So look, the sauce is looking beautiful. I'm gonna put just a little more a stock in there. I think I put it all right there. I'll write a perfect recipe for you later on. And um, let's see what we got here, friends. Okay, it's time to get nice. You know, they're fragile, and remember, we want them to be fragile. They're gonna solidify as they cook, okay? And then we're gonna put them on a cookie sheet lined with a, a seal pad, so then they won't stick. If you don't have a seal pad, get yourself a, a parchment paper. And voila. Well, I want a little brown out there. Very simple, friends. Gonna reduce the heat on here. You don't wanna do too many at the same time anyway, so everything works out perfect. I have 43. So, uh, probably you have too much. You, you can cut the recipe in half, and, you know. And I'll give you obviously half. Depends, of course, the size you're making them. If you free form them, then they may, uh, you see, now I pop them in the oven. And uh, however long it takes, I'll tell you what, I'm not exactly sure. I, I would guess to say 15, 20 minutes, but we're gonna know for sure and we'll let you know. I got the oven at 375 degrees. I'm just gonna pop them in there. And while they're cooking, I'm gonna uh, finish cooking the other ones. I'm gonna finish the gravy. And the gravy, really, let me just show you. The gravy is nothing. Nothing to it, friends. A little bit of heavy whipping cream. Heavy whipping cream. You gotta put cream in this gravy. They were, now, of course, if you don't have a nice stock, uh, you, you're, gonna, you're gonna need to do, you're gonna have to really, really, you gotta try to find a good stock. For those of you that have never made, look how beautiful that is. Uh, for those of you that have never made your own stock, you should try one time, at least the beef stock. I know it's not exactly easy, but, uh, um, it's really worth it. A little bit of uh, uh, LNP. <laughs> LNP. It's a lot easier to say LNP than Worcestershire sauce, right? Worcestershire sauce. So um, I'm using a little bit of uh, a soy sauce also. Uh, and that's going to give us the salt. So we have to be careful, not too much. There you go. Uh, I would say, what? A, a tablespoon of uh, soy sauce and a, a tablespoon of the Worcestershire sauce. We're gonna check seasoning, and uh, we're gonna let that cook for a little while, and then you'll know, and then the broccoli, now they are poached, I'm gonna take a fry pan, and I'm gonna saute them in a fry pan, nice, really, really, really quick to get them nice and, and golden brown, and that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so I get myself another fry pan, saute the broccoli, finish the gravy, and then, and then we get the mashed potato hot also. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, friends, this uh, gravy sauce is, is done. And you know what? I don't know if uh, Akia does it, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm, gonna <turn, laughs> I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm gonna put a little butter in there. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. And if they don't do it, we should call them and let them know. Just a little bit of butter, okay? Don't be shy now. Butter is our friend. Yeah, look at this, look at this. I'll show you, I'll show you. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, my friend. So I, I cooked them at about 145. Cooked them at uh, anywhere between 145, 155. It's up to you, friends. Okay. And uh, I, I think 145 is good. And by the time they cool, I'll show you. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This, this gravy. It's gravy. Look, look at this thing. Look at this. Now, you, this, you can rub it all over your body. <laughs> look at it. Isn't that beautiful or what? So, you know what we're going to do? We'll pour them right in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Put them all in there. Look at those things. Oh, yeah. You see what I mean? They're very happy in there. Okay. What do you think? I think they're gonna be very happy in there. All right, so then we're gonna get a plate. Oh, mamma mia, I forgot, a big plate. 
I forgot to take a plate. I got a mashed potato here, friends. I'm going to show you this cool thing here. I hope it doesn't fall. No, it doesn't. Look, this is my mashed potato. This is how I keep my mashed potato, okay? I put this, uh, this, uh, this, this um, uh, silicone thing that I use. Thank you. I put this silicone thing that I put on top of a glass bowl. I put a mashed potato in there, and then I can warm it up in the microwave oven. It's not that difficult. You don't put it right there. But this, look how cool that is. The minute you put it in, it's stuck. And it's a silicone. We have all kinds of different colors. I love those things. So look, I'm going to take a mashed potatoes. I'm gonna, no, not going to do anything fancy, yeah? I'm going to take a mashed potatoes. Right there, like nice and hot mashed potatoes. See, if you make the mashed potato in advance, you make a nice quinella mashed potatoes. Make sure you keep that over there, so it's nice. <laughs> and, um, and then you can take your meatballs and put them all the way around, or however you want to put them in. Okay, however many you want to give them, you, you know, more you give them and, and happier they're going to be. we we'll put a little bit of hole right there, put a couple of them right there. We're going to put however we decide to do it. Look at this. Does that look beautiful or what, friends? Look at this. Uh, I, I like a lot of gravy on my mashed potato. I don't know about you guys. I'm going to put a little bit of pasta right there on top of the whole thing. And then I got a broccoli. Yeah, I got a broccoli right there. I sauteed them in a pan to get them really, really beautiful and charred a little bit. You see? Look at this, friends. We got ourselves a beautiful plate. Okay, boom. Voila. Beautiful plate. And then, oh, oh, also, uh, you know, the, 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 the berry that they use to make the, uh, the traditional one is uh, 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 lingonberry. I never remember the name, lingonberry. Yeah, good luck finding lingonberry in Fort Lauderdale. So I use cranberry, and, uh, and I will give you the recipe for that. A little cranberry sauce right there, friends. You put this right there. This is amazing. This is the cranberry sauce we serve for Thanksgiving. And Jack just uh, reminded me, he says, well, this is like we're back at Thanksgiving again. We got a gravy, we got a mashed potatoes, we got the cranberry sauce, and except we have meatballs. <laughs> All right, friends. <laughs> I'm excited because I love this. This is delicious. We're going to eat them. What do I need a knife for? I don't need a knife for. I'm just going to cut it. Let me take this out of the way so Jack can see what I'm doing. Uh, look at this. Is that beautiful or what, friends? Just going to cut them in half, and they're going to be cooked to perfection. And look at it. Look at it. I'm telling you, friends. Mm. Oh, with a mashed potato. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. My friends, I'll tell you what. Mm. I'm never going to dish out of Ikea anymore. This is fantastic. I hope you make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, friends. And don't forget to ring the bell. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Wow, let me tell you, Jack. Those are Im unbelievable. And they cook to perfection, you see? They're not overcooked. They are, they're nice and, 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 and juicy and moist. And mmm, mmm. Oh, with the sauce? You know, I was a little worried about that sauce. How is it going to fit on the plate? Oh, let me tell you. It's like a heaven. Mm. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. Otherwise, I eat the whole thing. <laughs>